All right, we're gonna finish up. I just wanna show you that I went ahead and masked the leaves in the back and the top, basically everything above this line. So I only masked half of that leaf because I know it's a lot of masking fluid. I just applied that with my ruling pen. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do my background and I am going to actually use a straight edge because see how off I am when I put that straight edge in there. And I'm gonna use my <clears throat> ruling pen so I've got my, my uh, palette that basically, this is my indigo sepia, which is my darkest dark. It's mixed 50-50. That's what this is. It's it dry right now. So I'm going to reconstitute enough. I'll show you my ruling pen. You can order ruling pens off Amazon. They have them on the cheaper side. I would not order the cheap one. I would get a little more expensive one. If you can find an old German-made one on eBay, like an auction site, or a Japanese made one, they are better. I have a Japanese made one, they don't sell them in the States that I can find. So I'm just reconstituting that and I'm loading my brush, okay? So I've loaded my brush that I just mixed that with and this is my ruling pen. Now when searching for a ruling pen, this one is hinged. So it actually opens and closes. It looks like tweezers, right? So you open and close it um, to, and then you fill that reservoir in and that's what you apply your paint or your masking fluid in. I do all my masking fluid with this ruling pen. So I'm going to do this over here because of it splatters. So let's see if I can do it in a lighter part so you can see me filling it. So I'm going to take the side of my brush and fill in my ruling pen. It adjusts for a wider line or a thinner line. I'm gonna have it pretty thin and then I use a straight edge with this and you can always practice I always keep little strips of um, watercolor paper you know that when you cut off or have extra little pieces so I'm just gonna make sure it's flowing it is and it's right okay so I've got this set up diagonal so I'm gonna start over here you put the flat edge there's a rounded edge and a flat a flat edge against the back of the ruling pen and see, mine dipped up a little bit and that's okay because that's the leaf, so we're not going through the leaf. Back behind, through the lid, and then over here. And then I move my ruler and it makes a perfectly straight line. So now that we have masked out above that, and I rinsed my ruling pin out, the nice thing about that hinge on the ruling pin is you can open it to clean. Um, I rinse the paint out. I sign my paintings with this. I can use it for text. If I had smaller text or I've done some where you had text on like book binding that I was painting, I use this ruling pen. So I love this tool. So now I'm gonna get my flat brush. With this technique, you can do a really, um, With masking out the leaves back there, you can use a really large brush if you were doing like a big painting. Now I should have masked out a little bit of that lid, so I am gonna have to be careful because I didn't mask out the top of this lid. So I'm gonna carefully paint on both those sides. I missed that, okay. Curves around that might be too. Okay, so now I'm going to take my flat brush and I'm going to pull right up next to our line. And you can use this end if you want, but I went over my line, so I'm just going to pull right up next to it with this flat side. loaded my brush and I'm using like a little more saturated consistency <clears throat> because I want a lot of pigment back here I already masked over that I we painted that part that we didn't mask my goal always for a wash for a, a background like this is to have a nice flat with no sheen back here
it's easier over here because we don't have to worry about Okay, so now I have it filled in. So now I'm gonna go and feed this wash a little bit. So I'm just getting more of our indigo sepia on our paintbrush and I'm just pulling it across. This is why we went to the point of masking so we can do this. I'm gonna hop up a little since I didn't mask that top of that teapot. Okay, so we can do that and get that nice, you know, go all the way across. Now the other thing I wanna show you is I will use a cosmetic brush. These are the, like you can get them on Walmart, or Amazon, Target. They come in sets generally. <clears throat> I like to have multiple sizes. So they're nice and fluffy, and this is dry, completely dry. And so this is nice too to come in. I do this when it's wet, a little, sometimes a little less wet than this because I might take off too much pigment. Soaks up pigment at first, but you go in circles. I'm barely, barely touching the paper. But you gotta be careful around the this edge. I could have put some tape right along that edge if I had wanted, you know, to try to keep it. But this can smooth out a wash as well and not have any sheen or brush strokes. And then you can do as many layers. I'm gonna feed a little down here because I had that wood that was popping through, you know, from where my line wasn't, where it wasn't straight before. I'm going to feed along the bottom here. Okay. And then I can take that back in and smooth. And if you do, I just got a little bit there, but I can fix that with my, um, just wipe that off of that with my eraser brush. I'm going to do one more layer of color so i did my cosmetic brush a little too early so i wiped up a little too much pigment so i'm gonna put another layer in but if you have a large black background or even like a one with a gradation in the back it's nice i have some really big brushes like for big ones it's nice then you, you can use these brushes if you use this technique and really get smooth flat washes those are Japanese hake brushes, H-A-K-E. They're not super expensive. I think you can find them on Amazon. So I get mine here because I'm in Japan. But um, I think I spent $5 on that one. All right, so I'm going to do my same technique. I'm barely touching the surface. I'm just really trying to work this into the paper a little bit, get rid of sheen and brush strokes. Place so you want to be careful is not to get that brush on your teapot. That'll be a lot of correction. And then of course you will have to wait until it's completely dries before you can take the um, masking off. Like it didn't get all the way around there. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll let that sit and dry. So that's how to do a flat background all right now while we're waiting on that to dry and to be able to take the masking off i'm going to go ahead and work on some of the leaves that are not masked that are down here in the um composition now here's where you get to be an artist a little dot of masking now you can decide these leaves in our reference photo have quite a bit of green in them you get to decide if you want to make them 
more yellow and gold or more of the green in there. Now I painted this already before once and I did it with the green. So I'm gonna do today with more yellow and gold. I'm, I'll add a hint of green here and there, but more yellow and gold. All right, so I'm gonna start with my Bismuth Vanadate Yellow. We've got our Quinn Gold and our Sap Green. And those are the colors that I'll be using. So I'm gonna get my Bismuth Vanadate. I have kind of a cream consistency. I'm gonna go ahead and get our leaves with some color on them. Okay, so where I see green, I'm gonna substitute in Quinn Gold. So if you're using Sap Green, right now you're using Sap Green. If you're gonna follow along and do gold, then you're doing gold. I'm just gonna follow the shapes. So I'm looking at the big shapes and I come up here and I see that the green starts about there. So I'm gonna do my gold about there. Kinda of cuts across. Remember, everything on these leaves comes back to the center like a spoke. So we're pulling Got some more. I loaded my brush again and I'm gonna come over here. Got a little more pigment this time, a little more creamy consistency. I'm pulling back to this spoke back here. Now I have a little highlight that kind of got it kind of disappeared because things were a little wet. So I'm going to take a little piece of paper towel and I'm just going to pull my highlight back out right in there. I'm going to go on the other side because I wiped a little too much on that side. And then I'm going to throw a little green in at the base. kind of went over my highlight I pulled out, huh? But that's okay. So I threw a little green in there and then we'll let that, it's pretty wet. So I, you, you can go in with your brush right now. I kind of have not much on my brush. I wiped it as a thirsty brush. So I'm just kind of going in and pulling everything toward the center, which is kind of going to make some of those nice little radiation, you know, radiation, <laughs> radiated lines like that are in that leaf. Now I have a little, um, background that got onto my leaf. So I'm gonna get a very creamy consistency of the bismuth vanadate and clean up my very edges here. We don't want any overlap like the lettering on the leaf because the leaf is more opaque. Definitely would not have the lettering through it. Okay, so now we'll go on to our next leaf. I'm gonna go back here. He's cute, this guy. I got my bismuth vanadate. Okay, so we have a stem here, and we have a stem here that kind of got looked over. So I'm just gonna put that right in there. We'll pull that, we'll pull that stem back out. I'm gonna go ahead and do, whoops, I'm dipping my hand in my background up there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this leaf up here. That way this can be drying a little before we come in for the next step. Go ahead and get the yellow on this one. I think I'll only do two at a time because I don't want to get it too, you know, where too dry and then I just have to reconstitute, so. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna get my gold again. Where the green is, so if you're using sap green, load with sap green right now. Oh, that's the yellow, okay. So I need to go back and put yellow in here, but that's, we'll do that in a minute. So this um, color is in the center, mostly on the left-hand side. See how it's darker over here because it's kind of in the shadows. So this side is lighter, so I'm just gonna wipe my brush off and pull from the pigment we have here. It's lighter on this side. Gonna do light. Little bits. Okay. Pull some of this out. There you go. I'm dropping in a little more consistency, like more saturated right here. There's a sh in the shadow of that. So if you're using green, then green goes there. Right, I'm gonna pull in, there's a little dark shadow in here and a little in here. So that's what I'm pulling in with my Quinn Gold right now. If you're using sap green, use sap green. I'm gonna get a creamy consistency of my yellow. Pull a highlight back in here. I'm kind of always evaluating as I'm going from leaf to leaf. I'm evaluating what needs to happen on the other one. Okay. Come in with my, that one's still a little wet, so I'll bring, get a little gold on this leaf down here while we're waiting on this guy. Course is our bismuth vanadate. Okay, while we let that paint settle a little, we'll come up and work on this leaf. So we're gonna get our Quinn Gold Sap Green if you're using Sap Green. There's like a shadow of a stem, another little stem shadow here thing going on. So that's what's making those shapes. I'm gonna wipe a little off my brush. I had a pretty heavy consistency of the Quinn Gold. I'm gonna come up here, and I'm gonna pull this shadow shape with the lighter Quinn Gold because it's in the light a little bit more. Okay. And then while we have it on our brush, we can darken any areas we need to. Pop a tiny bit of sap green up here on this guy. I have a thirsty brush. I'm just getting rid of some color. Because like I said, this is the lightest. This side is light. <clears throat> Alrighty, I'm gonna come over and work on this. Get some Quinn Gold, Sap Green, if you're using Sap Green. Keep that quarter of an inch where it's light on the side. And then we'll come over here. And then this is where the leaf splits. A 
little bit of green. I have a thirsty brush and I'm just kind of blending right in there and then we're gonna clean up a fuzzy edge I'm gonna get my bismuth vanadate and come over here and clean up my fuzzy edge right there because it was still a little wet when I did that so all right we can get these guys painted over here here's one leaf and stem, and then there's a leaf back behind. I covered a little of that leaf, so I'm gonna add a cream consistency to pop that leaf back in there. And we'll come down here. With our bismuth vanadate. Okay, now we're going to get our gold again. Uh, let's see where we can do the gold. Come over here. That's too much. I'm going to wipe some off. It's pretty creamy right now. This is really dark down here. So I'm trying to... creamier consistency because there's kind of like a line it kind of does that and that and then this leaf is on top and I have that creamy consistency Okay. All right, let's see if we can come back here. I still have that cream consistency. This leaf is dark back up behind here. I'm getting pretty creamy. It's like very creamy, so I'm gonna come pull. I added a little water. I don't want it that thick. And then we'll pull on this side, a little color. Okay, and we got some bismuth vanadate. Do this leaf. What is happening over here? All right, so this is part, there's a little sun spot on that leaf that I had drawn in, so that's what that is. And then there's a stem back behind. So I'll get those stems. And then there's some uh, like branches that we don't have in there yet. So I'm gonna get a little more gold. I see how bad that is. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. I thinned it out on the tape. I'm just trying to get, make sure I didn't have too much on my, cause this is not like bright yellow in between these shadow shapes. So I'm just toning down. All right, and now that we get a little creamy consistency, I'm gonna come in and add a little texture here. It radiates, so any lines are very thin and they radiate back toward the center. But these ginkgo leaves have that nice, those nice radiating lines that are very normal in a ginkgo leaf. And you can add this texture in anywhere you feel you fit, it needs it. I'm gonna change this color since I went more with the gold. 
I'm gonna change this one a little. Okay. All right, so we're gonna let everything dry now and come back and add the stems and some details. Actually, yeah, because I'll wait till I get that off to do these leaves because they kind of meld. Okay, everything is dry. I pulled all the masking off and I wanted to show you right on the, lit, the knob. Then my mask went over a little bit, so I'm going to show you how to fix that if you do that. It's not that big of a deal to fix. <clears throat> We're going to take a thinner brush. I have a double lot. And I'm going to get into my Quinn, or Quinn, indigo sepia mixture. Just gonna very steadily go around this. All right, so now we have rounded it back out, and then you know you can. Tweak it. You want to make sure it's nice and round though because that's a prominent little bit. So when I have masked over something that's painted, which I did right here, a little bit of the masking pulled a little pigment up. So I'm just going to take a little of my Payne's Gray and come back. It's a, really about the only area that I need to touch up. I might touch up a little bit of the, um, I'm saying a little bit a lot. I might touch up the ginkgo leaves that are in there as well. We'll let it dry and see. I know I missed a little ginkgo leaf right there, so I will touch him up for sure. Okay, and then the top part, if we want to get a thin, thin amount, I can kind of pull that back in. Okay, that's about all I'm gonna do. And when you're touching up just teeny bit around an edge like that, you don't notice that um, it's not smooth. The rest of our background is so smooth now, I'm very happy. All right, we're gonna go back and finish these leaves. Back with my Bismuth Vanadate, cream consistency, dry. We did just do that lid, so we have to be careful. All right, I'm gonna come in here. There's another leaf that's in the composition that's not in the drawing or in my painting because it kind of cut off and I didn't want that leaf cut in half. I thought it was kind of unnatural looking. I'm trying to be careful around my background here because this is an opaque color or it can be used in an opaque fashion. I think it's actually semi-transparent. I looked it up the other day. Um, because it can be more opaque in nature, it will leave a cloud if you get any on the black background. Okay. Just careful around this lid. I do that quite a bit. If I mess up, I use my finger to just push things away. All right, I'm gonna do those two and come in with the Quinn Gold. There's not a lot. They're pretty yellow. Let's see, I'll get a little bit of Quinn Gold. Just remember it radiates toward the center, so I'm just getting a little color. There's a little shadow, it's like bent over here, so I'll do that darker on that edge. Okay, 
I'm not gonna do much to that leaf back there. There's a stem. I ended up with a little thicker than it should have been, so I'm just gonna shadow it down a bit, you know, like just add a little something there, makes it look like it's supposed to be there. Okay, I'm gonna come in with our yellow over here. And I'll show you my one well, with the green leaf too, at the end with more green leaves. We can decide which one we want better. I just, whenever I paint something more than once, especially if it's the same size, I like to change it up so they're not the same um, painting exactly. Even though we can never exactly copy, you know, one, but I never want a collector to be unhappy with me if I've sold a painting and I repaint it again, which I have done. Lately, I've been painting things that I painted about 10 years ago. I've been kind of revisiting. <clears throat> so when I do that, I try to tweak it a little. So if a collector has it, they don't get, a, you know, upset that someone else owns that painting now too. All right, back with my Quinn Gold. Right here in the center, I'm gonna get a little something down. This leaves kind of twisty and curly back here. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna pull from the pigment we have and we're just gonna pull some of those texture, you know, that radiates out, those nice veins. Okay. Right, let's move on to our big leaf. I'm gonna do the little and the big at the same time. Now this back leaf has some white, almost white, so I'm gonna kinda steer clear of a couple little areas so that it has got the light hitting it and it, it's white almost. It is white. We're going to leave it white. So that the light's hitting it and you see all the crinkles. I have a little smudge of dark there. That's what you're seeing, if you're seeing that. But there is a little bit of black from the background. That was the nice thing. I wasn't too worried about it because this yellow covers. Okay, <clears throat> this leaf has quite a bit of color and it has quite a bit of light. So we're gonna follow the shapes. We're gonna get Quinn Gold. Come in here. Wipe a little off. So I'm gonna try to really, let's see, there's a big sunny spot here. And then the color comes back here and the edge is sunny again. So I'm really looking at my reference photo. All right, I'm gonna get more. It's creamy and dark, dark in the middle here. So I'm gonna darken that up. Okay. We've got still that shadow color on our brush and it is shadowy. I'm using the tip of my brush now to kind of pull in some of those folds.
loading my brush again. Got some more cream consistency. It's dark in here. So we're looking at our reference photo. We're pulling texture. Let's go in and get, get a pretty dark amount of Quen Gold and really darken up the center here. All right, I feel like we're getting the depth that we needed. I got, I loaded my brush again. I'm pretty happy with the way that one's looking. Rinse a little, I'm not rinsing all the color of my brush. I had a lot in there and now this back piece has just a little color on the left side. Adding that. Pushing that black out of there. So whenever you're using a yellow you have to be really careful. Yellows are kind of hard. You always want to shade with another yellow, you know, like right now we're using Quinn Gold. Um, you can use oranges on like flowers, like daffodils and sunflowers. I always use oranges. So you want to stick in this family. Okay, I want to show you how I'm going to fix back here. Super simple. I had that cosmetic brush roll over into my wood. Luckily, it's wood grain back here. So I'm just going to take my wet brush and wipe it right out. It adds a little darkness back there. It's okay. That wood grain's forgiving. All right, let's go do our last leaf. Try not to drag across. Okay, if your stem got a little crooked, watch where wet things are. Okay. All right, now let's go shade this leaf. We're gonna get Quinn Gold. This is where you're using sap green if you're doing green. Getting a thicker consistency. Still a little wet back here. I'm gonna get those shapes in. I'm gonna need to let it sit for a second. Okay, now I'm gonna get a little creamier consistency.
And then if you want to add any a little bit of green just for consistency, we have we have a little green here, kind of bounce it around. We can throw a little green. If you're using green, then you can throw gold in there. Up. All right, let's go do our stem. We'll let that dry and see if we need to come back and do anything with that leaf. Okay, we'll do our stem. So I'm going to get my sepia. For my stem. Any brown. <coughs> you don't want it too red, though, like a burnt sienna or something. You don't want it to look like the wood of the box. So I have a cooler. Sepia is cool. <coughs> At least the Daniel Smith one is. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, we'll come over here and do this stem. So there's a stem, he kind of got lost. Or a, not a stem, a branch. <clears throat> that leaf is kind of wrapping around it. Excuse me. So we'll let that dry and then we can darken it up. Okay, so this one, we already did the wash, uh, the first glaze. I'm just cleaning up where the stem goes under the leaf. It's very bright over here because the sun is hitting it. But about halfway, kind of like where this leaf make a little moon shape and then bring it back all the way back behind that leaf and we can let that dry and add a little bit more to it let this guy dry all right let's check our leaves and see any last minute things we want to do and gold. And darken right in the V, you know, like where the stem meets the... <clears throat> but anywhere else we need to do that, let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go make a little more sense of this. I'm getting sepia on my brush. We're gonna come in. Now I can't even find it. Not right here. Got lost for a second. Okay, we're gonna come in over here. I've got sepia on my brush. I'm going to use my brush to draw around the stem. It's shadowed on the left hand side. We're going to go around this stem and I'm going to wipe some of that sepia off and then I'm going to make a line where I know so you can tell that that leaf is kind of curling. 
and then I'm gonna rinse and I can pull a little from the pigment around just so that it doesn't look so light. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and that's about all I'm gonna do. Now, the only thing I wanna to talk to you about, I'm, I'll probably sign off camera, but we don't leave, we didn't leave a great space for signature down here. Um, so I'm probably gonna come back in over here with a red or probably the red, a red probably, a dark red, and sign right here. Don't sign on this line, tempting, but never have your signature floating. So there's two things you have to be careful of. You're always gonna mat, right? We're most likely gonna mat unless we're varnishing a painting. So be aware that when you mat, they come in quarter of an inch, right, on all sides. So if you sign your name right to the edge, you're gonna you're risking having your signature cut off. You're also making it harder on the framer, or you if you're the framer and matter. So come in more than I try to come in about a little less than half an inch from the edge. Same thing, you know, half an inch up from the bottom. So your signature needs to be kind of here or same location over here. Please never sign your name in the middle of things. I've judged some shows and I know judges that have not given awards because the name was funky in a funky place. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, thank you so much. It was really fun painting with you. I hope you enjoyed this project and send me pictures um, you can do them on the Facebook page or you can send them to my email when you're done.